right, hello and welcome. Today we are live here in my house on video with everything we need to start getting together and making uh, a batch of meat. So, first things first, what I've done is I have already gone and taken and sanitized my food grade five gallon bucket with lid. And the ingredients that we're having just to make this mead is we're using Lauvin 71B yeast, four gallons of water, 15 pounds of brewer's honey, and two bottles of Tarani red raspberry syrup. Now the reason why we're using Tarani red raspberry syrup instead of fresh berries is because this is going to be turning into alcohol and any sugar that's in that syrup is going to feed the yeast that's in this yeast packet. So what we're going to do is because we're kind of on a time limit and hopefully the either A the, the camera won't go out or uh, we will have just enough time to do this. So the very first thing that we're going to do in this process, in this video, we're just going to pitch the mead today and then we will, as time goes on and we check it and we get ready to put it into the carboy and some other things, uh, we will take you through the entire process. And this is my first batch of mead for the year. So first thing we want to do before anything, we want to put the honey in first. And one thing you kind of have to do is you kind of have to eyeball this because of the amount of honey that we're putting in and the amount of, of uh, flavoring that we're putting in. This is not going to be five gallons of liquid per se from the bottle, the distilled water. But it's going to be five gallons in volume because the honey's going to displace things and these two bottles of the, the flavoring are going to displace things. And also over here we have an uh, implement to stir this with whenever we're done. So the first thing we're going to do, and get in this real quick, is we're going to go ahead and dump out the uh, 15 pounds of honey. And we have another pound of honey and another bottle of flavoring in reserve in case we need to back sweeten it whenever we get ready to finish up the batch and bottle it. So we're going to put this first batch of honey, uh, first thing of honey in. And this is just so fun. So we're going to put this one in. And I think out of this, what we might end up using for liquid is more than likely we're probably going to use like two and a half gallons of water, which is cool because that means there'll be more yeast. And what will happen is that this uh, mead will probably come out being a high uh, alcohol content which is cool. That's what we want. We don't want it weak. And we will put the lid on this and then we'll come back and kind of shake some water up in it to kind of loosen anything if we have to top anything off. So we've got the first one done. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the second one in. One thing you want to do whenever you're making mead is have a purpose. This is for ritual and for just general enjoyment. But eight bottles of these are going to be for ritual. And you can have make intentions while you're brewing this. Uh, honor God while you're doing this. And that's what I tend to do. I, I honor all of my gods and goddesses through this. And it's just something that is just it's incredible. It's so freaking good. Meat is one of the coolest things that anybody that's pagan or non can make, in my opinion. Alright, so we got that one. That's the second one. And we'll go ahead and put the lid on it so that we can shake it out and get as much of the leftovers as we can because they're there, uh, you know, once this is all done, there's going to be uh, going to be some leftovers. And this is the last 
because this is the slowest part. I think the waters are going to run a lot faster. But this is going to be the slowest part. And you can have any flavor. I would put the fruit in it, but one thing about putting fruit in it is a lot of times whenever you put fruited uh, meat into a carboy, the fermentation can get stuck. And it can just, it, it's, you know... And I think with the flavored syrups, it gives us a little bit of a chance to feed the yeast a little bit better and get a more consistent of flavor because sometimes certain fruits aren't sweet enough on their own and don't really, haven't really come into their particular mode of flavorfulness. So, yeah, that's why we're trying this. And there's so many different flavors. Like the next one I want to do is chocolate cherry. And then there's another one where you can do... Uh, 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 salted caramel and I would like to try what see what a salted caramel mead would taste like all right so we've got three bottles uh, we've got 15 pounds of, of honey in there next we're gonna come up and we're gonna pour our first bottle of the Tarani in here so have something to kind of break up So that's bottle number one. And I'll keep these. These are pretty cool bottles. And this is bottle number two. And what we're going to do before I put in the uh, first batch of water, I'm going to pour in this packet of yeast and I'm going to stir the honey around a little bit so what we're going to do is we're going to take this shake it up real good and we are going to dump the entire packet into this and these, most of these ingredients can be bought at your local brewing center if you have one in your area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this siphoning cane here and we're going to take and we're going to stir this up. Uh, and we're going to take and stir it. do is take and stir 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 now we're going to stop for a minute leave that in there and we're going to pour our first bottle of the distilled water which you can get the ingredients for this the yeast is about a dollar these flavor bottles were about nine bucks a piece. Um, the honey was 16 bucks per, per container, and then the water was 90 cents. So, yeah. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour our first batch of water in here. And in between each, each of these, we are going to go ahead and stir it up. So that's the first one. And we're going to kind of stir that in a little bit more. And we're going to stir this honey around. And stir that honey around. And stir that honey around. And stir that honey around. Okay. And it's going to be very viscous. So what you want to do is you want to keep stirring until you get everything incorporated as much as you can. And what's going to happen is that's going to work this yeast all the way through 
this entire bag. This is the only time you want to add any kind of air to it. After this step, after we get done pitching this batch, once it starts to go into the carboy, we never want to introduce air to it again if we can help it. Because air can in, uh, bring in things that will uh, kill the yeast and take away from your overall alcohol content. Okay, so we're going to go for our next gallon. Here we go. I'm so excited. Here in a few months, it only takes about eight weeks for this to really come together. Oh, that beautiful, beautiful. And this batch will make about 25 bottles of meat, so you've got enough to put back for, for ritual for the year, and then have enough to put back for another year. Um, one of the things I, I recommend about meat is don't drink it while it's young. Age it. Let it sit on its side in your refrigerator for a period of six months to a year, and then take it out and give it a try. And I'm telling you folks, it is just so delicious. And that's one of the main things why I think it's so cool that pagans make meat is because we know how good this stuff really is. So that's our second bottle of water. We might get four gallons of water in here. I'm not really sure. We'll see. So we're going to go ahead and stir this again. Stir it a little bit more. And later on this evening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the lid on this. I'm going to see if the yeast has started to work. And how I'll know is there will be like a scum starting to float on top. That's just all of the stuff that it's yeasted and eaten and it's taking it off. And every day, as long as I see that, I'm going to skim it off. And then when it stops throwing those kind of things to the top of the, car, uh, to the, top of the bucket, it's time to go into the carboy. And when we do the carboy, I'll shoot another video of that for you guys to see it. So there's the next one. All right. Now that we're getting a little bit more water in here, it's getting to be a lot easier to stir it. And the smell is just so freaking. You can smell the honey and you can smell that raspberry syrup. So, all right, this is going to be incredible. So, I'm going to take our next one. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to stir this in here or put it in here. Yeah, out of this next one, we may not get the full gallon, but if we get a half of it, yeah, I think we just might barely, and I mean barely, get it just up underneath the lip of this. So we're going to stir this one more good time. Get as much of this off of the bottom as I can. And then we'll crack one more gallon in here. And whenever we pitch this, if it becomes up a little bit low, whenever we go to do the carboy, I'll show you how to deal with that situation as well. There we go. All right. Alright, here goes the fourth gallon, folks. Wish me luck. I think I'm only going to get like a half a gallon in here, to be honest. We will see. But here we go. We're going to go really slow. I have to be very careful about this water level right here. A little bit more. All right. 
Well, I think we got it right there at about half a gallon. I think that's as much as I want because I don't want to go overboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stir this. So basically, folks, we have the mead started and all you need is water, honey, yeast, a bucket, food grade bucket to put it in and a lid to get started and then we'll show you the next parts of this process. But go ahead and let me stir this. And I am Reverend Sylvanus Walker, the Order of Standing Oak and of Raven Temple of CX Wickham. And we are going to continue the mead journey. This is my very first batch of mead for the spring. Pitch a batch. You can pitch it in one gallon containers, you can pitch it in this. The sky's the limit and the cre creativity that you have for it is unparalleled. You can make whatever kind of meat basically that you want. If there's something that can flavor it that you would like, then by all means, go for it. We will let this just kind of just drip down into that just let it go kind of let some of that kind of run off the sides just kind